Well, hello, people, and uh, welcome to the weekly daily inspirational mess um, class. If I find these the lessons, okay, uh, and then I have to find you guys again. Okay, <laughs> a lot of screens on one screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share with you the, the titles of the previous uh, seven uh, messages, and then uh, you choose which one uh, you want to uh, talk about. Okay, here they go. They are uh, June twenty fourth, feeling free to fe feel your feelings. June twenty five, recognizing your whole self. June twenty six. A sandcastle on the ocean's shore. June 27th, no longer fe feeling alone. June 28th, creating your own personal peace workshop. June 29th, making the conscious choice to use free will. And June 30th, we are the eternal expressions of love. Okay. So which ones would you be interested in today? This Mike or Jen? I like the one about free will. Oh, free will. Okay. Making the conscious choice to use free will. Mm -hmm. yeah, All right. We're going to try that one then. At least we're going to start there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and read the, uh, the two paragraphs that relate to that uh, lesson. And then we'll go from there. Is the June 25th, I'm sorry, June 29th message, making the conscious choice to use free will. There's two paragraphs. Paragraph one, today let us use free will to remind us that we have a lot more control over how we choose to view our experiences than we have been taught to believe. For example, if we wish to be more forgiving, then today let us use our free will to decide that when the ego demands judgment, we will instead forgive. Before each interaction, let us remind ourselves, today, if the ego demands that I judge, I will remember that thanks to free will, I can choose forgiveness as my constant companion. Forgiveness is my goal for this and every interaction. That's an end quote. By clarifying your goal before our interactions, we become a proactive, we become proactive instead of reactive. By being and remaining proactive, we, we remind ourselves that we, not the ego or its programs, are in control of our thoughts, words, actions, and reactions. And then paragraph two. Today, let us become aware that there is who in truth, who we are in truth, and who we've been programmed to be. When we're being who we are in truth, the love that God is, we are free to be the loving being we were created to be. When we're being who we have been programmed to be, we are held captive within the ego's judgment-centric, fear-based mindset. When we are using the ego's mindset, we are like zombies, unconsciously following the ego's path, its past programs, patterns, and false concepts. This is when the ego is living our life for us, and thus why we feel a lack of balance, freedom, and fulfillment. Once we start to notice that giving our life away to the ego to live for us is naturally living, we look for a better way. This better way invites us through free will to let go of what we know is not working for us and to make the conscious choice that are in alignment with our living na nature. That's the end of paragraph two. And so the idea for this daily inspiration is to go in with your goal already set. So you have a goal before every interaction. And today's goal is to uh, use free will to be forgiving instead of ju judgmental. And so the quote, our goal today is, is today, if the ego demands that I judge, I will remember that thanks to free will, I can choose forgiveness as my constant companion. And then, so we wake up with the understanding that today forgiveness is gonna be a constant companion. And so before every interaction, because we know the ego answers first and loudest, uh, and when the ego demands or whispers to us that it wants us to judge self or others, we're already going to have the goal already set in our minds 
that we want to forgive, but our goal is forgiveness. And so the, the time we spend in judgment becomes less and less the more we proactively make forgiveness our constant companion. Comments or questions? Okay, so, uh, yeah. So the point is, uh, let's go in to our interactions proactively, not reactively. Because if we go in reactively, we know that the ego is always going to answer first and loudest. And so, okay, we know that. Okay, the ego is going to answer first and loudest. That means I'm going to judge. I'm going to criticize self or others. Or I'm going to do anything other than love, my brother or sister. But mm -hmm. if I consciously make forgiveness and all of love's tools, my constant companion, then I spend less time in the delusion and more time where I belong, which is at one with the mind of God, with love and then expressing that love to others. Does anybody have any uh, examples of how they could have used forgiveness as a companion instead of judgment <laughs> in the last week? <laughs> We're very silent today. <laughs> yeah. I'll be bold. Okay, be bold. And this is not about politics. It's just having to view the debates. Um, so in general, period, doesn't matter. You know, we're not talking about the political aspect, but that, that was, that was rough. I failed. I failed the Course in Miracles that week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to laugh because I usually laugh about stuff. So just being honest. Yeah. For anybody supporting Biden, that was pretty rough for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and because we know what uh, what happens if uh, people don't think that he's awake enough to be the president, so to speak. Right. So, right. Uh, so yeah, we have to just practice, okay, if I lose my peace over this, then I'm uh, blocking uh, God's will for me, which is to be the light of the world. And so, okay, you know what? I'm, I was a little concerned, <laughs> a little frustrated by uh, what I saw. But, uh, you know, I can either be concerned about that and worried and, and have dreadful thoughts about the possible future, or I can just put it in God's hands and say, you know, if it's A, it's A, and or if it's B, it's B. But my, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have peace. So I'm gonna have peace and I'm gonna be a light in this world, no matter if it's A or B, <laughs> you know, no matter mm -hmm. if it's blue or red. In the end, it doesn't really matter to me because my, uh, I have one job and that's to be the light of the world that God created me to be. As Mike always says, and we always talk about it in class, your job is a miracle. The miracle extension, that's God's responsibility. So, yes. <laughs> I don't know how to, how to say what, what I saw in the debate, but uh, <laughs> whatever happens, I know that my job is going to be, okay, stay aligned, stay aligned with, with the mind of God, and in each and every interaction, be that love. And it doesn't matter who's leading the nation or, in this case, the world. And that's something that we can use for everything that, uh, quote unquote, disrupts our peace of mind. We can use that example for all examples. Mm -hmm. For everything the ego throws away, we can make the same exact decision. That's one thing we always try to simpl simplify the Course in Miracles and, then, and also simplify this message of, a, of a, you have chosen to remember is that you always have the same solution to whatever the problem is. And no matter what the problem is, no matter how the ego paints it, and it can paint it a thousand different ways, the solution is always the same. Align with love and share and be only love to this person, to this situation, 
in this interaction. And what whatever will be, will be. Um, <clears throat> hi, James. Hi, Mara. So I wanted I wanted to to ask you to elaborate a little bit because for me, the hardest thing for me is to show love to me. I am like my worst critic. Go. Okay. <laughs> Go. <laughs> okay. First, uh, you have to remember, what did God create you for? It was to be the light of the world, right? Uh, to be a loving light in this world, in this duality, to be oneness within duality, right? right. So that's your job. And God wants you to, to accomplish your job. That's your only job. <laughs> it might be in a lot of different situations, but that's your main primary job, to be that loving light. And so if you're being unfor or unforgiving towards yourself, you're just beginning to put blocks between you and your job, you know? So you put a block of unforgiveness, you put a block of condemnation, you put a block of guilt and shame and lack of self-worth. And that all dims your light, right? So that, that all dims your light. So if you're dimming your own light, then you're not gonna feel fulfilled because you're not gonna be fulfilling your function as light of the world. And so if you don't have a, a self-worth or you don't feel that self-worth enough to forgive yourself, then know that somebody much wiser than, than us has already forgiven you. Because as we talk about in class all the time is uh, God has never judged you. So if God doesn't judge you, why would you judge yourself? Why would you try to do something that God does not do? And God only does what, what is, is needed. And that's be, that's to be love. And so God is only asking you to do what's needed. And that's to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself and let it go. Uh, because of, as we also talk about a lot is uh, all you have to do is look back at your past. And see how many di difficult and challenging times you had. But sooner or later you overcame them. And... Uh, and when you overcame them, you obtained uh, certain spiritual tools, uh, such as greater compassion, greater wisdom, greater self-worth, uh, greater understanding, greater ability to forgive self or others. And so all those times that were dark and challenging, they just helped you become a wiser, more compassionate being. So whatever it is that you're judging yourself about right now in the present moment, this here, you're judging yourself because you don't understand what's really happening. It's what's really happening is, is that you volunteered to, to have this area in your life where you can uh, look at yourself through a lack of forgiveness and decide sooner or later that that's not what you want. You, just want, you don't want to keep on hitting your head on, on, the, on the wall because it never delivers to you the peace that you want. And so by doing that, by seeing that, your future self is going to be a, a lot more self-forgiving and wiser thanks to your present self. But it was only because of your present self that went through the challenge and overcame the challenge that your future self can now be this more self-forgiving person. And so whatever this is that you cannot forgive yourself about, this is just an illusion that God wants you to let go. Because if you're not letting this go, then you're not doing the job that he sent you to, 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 to do. And so if you cannot forgive yourself, then ask God to forgive you instead of you. Instead of you forgiving yourself, ask God to forgive you. And he will, because God is forgiveness. God is not judgment. God is forgiveness. God is not fear. God is love. God is not condemnation. God is compassion. And so all God is asking you to do is, is be who he is. And to be who he is, as the Course would say, it is an effortless accomplishment because that's who you already are. The truth in you has already forgiven you. It's just that the little ego part in you is choosing not to forgive yourself. 
Because if you if you hold on to the non-forgiveness, then you hold on to the ego. So the ego gets to survive and thrive through your misperception. And so it's the ego who's surviving and thriving because you choose not to forgive yourself. It's not you. And so all you have to remember is this little ego who's holding you captive does not even exist because God is love and all. And so if God is love and all, then the ego itself must be nothing. So nothing is imprisoning you. Nothing is stopping you from forgiving yourself other than your own misperceptions. And so all you have to do is forgive your, your illusions of yourself. What's, a, what's an illusion? It's nothing. So all you have to forgive yourself is nothing. No matter what, how the ego calls that nothingness, it's still nothing. Multiply anything by zero, it's still nothing. And so whatever that this challenge is that you're not forgiving yourself about, maybe you can expand on that. That's not real or true. And that's not what God needs you to do. To do. God needs you to forgive yourself. And so if you don't feel wise or wise enough or, or spiritual enough or not, whatever enough to forgive yourself, then just invite God to forgive you, to forgive you and to show you how it is, how it feels to forgive yourself through him. So oh, thank you so much. Um, what I find is that I am very easy to forgive and to love everyone. And I always kind of put myself towards the back and it might be conditioning from my childhood probably so I, it's just something that I want to work on a little more it's there I mean and I do it but it takes a little more effort for me towards me than me towards other am I making any sense sure yeah we all have a certain, we all have a certain range of, of that you know we all right. have a certain range of that misperception that we hold about ourselves. So right. if anybody have has any uh, inputs on being able to forgive yourself or not putting yourself always last, they can chime in. <laughs> I do. Um, Mani, I have like my own experiences in that area because I've always been one to put everybody else before me. And then there comes a point in time where it just, I finally realized, hey, I'm putting everybody for me and then I'm not loving myself as a result of it. And, and what was happening is I was becoming ticked off. I was becoming angry and I'm going, whoa, 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 you know, and then because nobody does anything to us. So as a result of thinking, hey, how am I? I'm going to always be loving and kind and compassionate towards people. But if it's at my sacrifice and it, 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 it's as a result of when I was growing up. Um, you know, my parents passed away when I was young, when I was a teenager and I had to, con in my mind, I had to control things so that they would be okay. Right. But, um, I don't know if that helps because that's what my experience was with the same, with the same thing. No, all this is awesome. And it's just food for thought. You know, I haven't been talking a lot in class lately been quiet i've been listening to everyone <clears throat> so i appreciate this thank you and if i can i make a, a suggestion hanging out with dogs and small children are a great great way to get in touch with that love and, and without being in a non-judgmental way and it's like a way to feel our own to like little kids if you're helping them or doing something with them they're going to look it up to you and be like they'll see more of your truth than a lot of adults will and dogs can see your truth more than a lot of adults will and sometimes just hanging out with the, their joyful presence and being present that like helps us to feel helps me to feel just let go of the ego program which is judging us and which tells us that whatever we do is not good enough or that, you know, especially as a woman, we're trained to, we're supposed to put everyone's needs above every, our own and, and forgive other people, but be the most critical on ourselves. And I, I mean, I'm guessing men feel that way too, in their own way, but it's such a program that we have to like, okay, observe it and be like, well, that's not true. I'm not, I'm not 
I'm doing a good job. I'm doing the best I can. Or, you know, like when you when you hear that self-critical talk to be like to try to take a breath and pause it and then reframe it to like think about something that you did that you were happy with today or that or some just try to like superpower yourself to focus on your positive qualities because it's like you have to get yourself out of the mud of the program so that you can remember what an awesome amazing woman you are it, sometimes like little things like that can help me to get out of the muck so just wanted to share that thank you yeah so whenever uh Okay, let's say uh, a thought of a lack of self-forgiveness comes to your mind, okay? Don't uh, feed it with your time, focus, and energy anymore. Instead, do the you, you know that's the ego is thinking that for you. You're not thinking that for yourself. Because if you, the truth in you, was in control, then you would forgive yourself. But the thing is that your ego and your past programming is in control. That's why you don't forgive yourself. And so you just say to yourself, okay, I don't feel it. I'm not feeling very self-forgiving. It's simply because the ego is in control of my thinking. Okay, now let me use the situation to take back control of my mind from the ego. And I do that by making the conscious choice to forgive myself. To put myself first. And I put myself first because I, I remember that we're all one, right? So when you're putting yourself first, you're putting everybody first. You're making the foundation more solid. And when the, self, when the foundation is more solid, when you're more at peace and self-compassionate, then you're able to be a brighter light for everybody around you. And so it's more useful and helpful for you to put yourself first because you shine brighter that way. And it's not, it's not an act of uh, selfishness. It's actually an act of selflessness. Because if you're putting everybody first and you have a very small trunk, <laughs> a tree, uh, it's pretty high, but it's a very thin trunk, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it can, it can break anytime, any storm, it can break. But if you make that, that uh, trunk solid by making sure that you are self-forgiving, by making sure you're putting yourself first, then your branches can can uh, be larger and, and and provide more shade for others. And so when you're when you're helping yourself, you're you're helping everybody around you. And so don't allow the ego to make you think that you're being selfish because you're taking care of yourself. Love the analogy of the of the tree. Thank you. Yes. Um, like, do you have any words of wisdom? <laughs> yeah, we're always, we may not realize it, maybe subconscious, but we're always harder on ourselves than on anybody else. And actually, when we are unforgiving of others, is because we're holding an unforgiving, an unforgiveness of ourselves that we don't want to look at. You know, uh, really, the it's all an unforgiveness of ourselves. You know, uh, it's just that when we can be unforgiving of others, then we can pretend that uh, we don't, we don't, that we're not unforgiving of ourselves. It's a way of hiding from our own fears. Yeah. So yes. So let's uh so practice tomorrow or even today if you want. Yeah. Saying to yourself, okay, whenever the ego takes over control of my mind and I'm choosing not to, to forgive myself, I'm gonna do the opposite of what the ego is demanding. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop placing my time, focus, and energy on the ego's demands of, of of a lack of forgiveness. And instead, I'm gonna place those thoughts aside and forgive myself mm -hmm. knowing that forgiveness is God's uh, what God wants for me because God wants me to be the light of the world. And so forgiveness is one of those keys that helps you become that light. Mm -hmm. 
And so when you when you become your light, then you feel fulfilled. Then you feel like, you know what? Yeah, this this feels right. Feels right to be self-forgiving. And the more you can forgive yourself because we're all one, the, the more you'll be, be able to forgive others. And the, the better you treat yourself, again, that will flow outwards. And the better you'll be able to treat others because the more compassion and love you will have inside of you to give to others. And so don't let the ego drain that from you. Mm -hmm. Just remember that you're God's child in creation and you're forever worthy of forgiveness and, and joy and peace and grace and mercy and all that beautiful stuff. That's that's your inheritance, but you have to you have to be willing to accept your inheritance to to enjoy it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to make the conscious decision as an adult that you know that you're here to forgive yourself so that you can shine brighter. That you know that you're here to work on yourself and heal yourself so that you can shine brighter for others. And so do that, practice that, and tell us how it goes. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, and the second, uh, the second, uh, sent the first sentence of the second paragraph it says, "Today, let us become aware that there is who and who we are in truth, and who who have been who we have been programmed to be." And so, when we're being who we are in truth, then we're being that forgiving, uh, loving, self-loving person. When we're being who we've been programmed to be, then we're not forgiving ourselves, not being self-loving. Any other comments on making the conscious choice to use free will? Yeah, so anytime uh, anytime you're experiencing anything other than love, any uh, anything other than love's expressions such as joy or peace or charity or or mm -hmm. compassion. Just use those moments, not to dive deeper into the darkness, but to remember, okay, now I'm going to use this moment to practice use, uh, developing my free will. Remembering that in every moment, I can choose peace instead of this. And so I don't have to remain in the darkness. I don't have to remain in the, in the mud. I can release myself from that delusion in any second that I want. Every moment allows me the opportunity to begin anew. And so you don't have to remain stuck in the mud. Every moment allows you the opportunity, thanks to free will, to begin anew. Mm -hmm. And so do that. Practice that. Practice returning your mind back to source. And anytime your mind is not aligned with love, it's not aligned with source. It's not where your mind is supposed to be. And so practice coming back to center. And the ego will say, well, if this happened, then you can spend, you're going to spend uh, 10 minutes in the mud. If this other thing happens, you're going to spend an hour in the mud. This other thing happens, you're going to spend three days in the mud. Are you going to put somebody, somebody in the mud for three days? No, you don't have to buy that. You can immediately and without hesitation decide to forgive and begin anew. Align with the love that you are and offer that love to your brothers and sisters and in doing so, freeing yourself from the duality of this world. From going from, uh, for, freeing yourself from level two, as we call it in the Course in Miracles. Yeah. And, and being level one again. In any moment, you can go from level two to level one. From duality, from the belief that there's actually an opposition to God, to love or all, that's a duality, that's level two where we actually have been uh, programmed to believe that we can actually do something other than what God is mm -hmm. or be something other than what God is. We can never do that in truth. Only in the only in the dream can we do that. Only when we're dreaming or asleep can we do that. 
And so you can never not you can never not be who God is. And who God is, the love that He is, is the love that you are. And that's and only the loving you is true. And only the loving you and everybody else is true, no matter what they think, say, or do. It doesn't matter what the, their body thinks, says, or does. That doesn't, that, it's got nothing to do with the eternal in them, with the truth in them, with the love in them. And so what you want to do is you want to use your free will to see past the stories of the ego, to see past that fog and see only your brother's truth as true. It's healing the love in them as true. And forgiveness helps you get to that place. Forgiveness helps you to like place the fog aside and see only the truth in your brother is true. And in doing so, you have peace. And by having peace, you become a light in the world. Because you show others who are stuck in the level two, who are stuck in, in the delusion, that there is another way that they too can have peace in any situation thanks to free will. You know, free, free will does not mean that we can change the truth in us. It only means that we can delay as much as we want. It only is a matter of time. It only means that we can continue to delay and continue to suffer as long as we decide. You know, free wills only only uh, means that we can take as long as we want before we before we recognize who we are. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a good point to remember that your suffering is in the end after all is said and done your choice. Mm -hmm. You can decide how long to suffer. You and only you can decide that. But you and only you can say enough. I'm done suffering. <laughs> I get it. I've processed the, these emotions and now I come, come back to peace. I can now free myself from that suffering. Mm -hmm. But you can do it in any any time you want. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, being in a duality, you can keep on your suffering as long as you want to. That's free will. And so, uh, yes. Renata, did you want to say something? So, no, so to clarify, so you said level two is duality and level one is oneness? Yeah, uh, level one is is at being at one with God, being that love that God is, and seeing only that love. It's kind of like putting the love lens in front of your eyes and seeing only love, seeing only what's true. And then duality is the idea that there can be something that's in opposition to God, to love, to all. That it can be uh, judgment. But because God is love, one aspect of love is forgiveness. But the duality, level two, says that there can be an opposite to forgiveness. And it calls it judgment. That there can be an opposite to, to love. And it calls it fear. Right. But all this stuff that the ego calls real, it's not real. It's just it's real within its dream, within its mindset. But... Uh, in each moment, we can choose to see the truth as true and let go of the delusion. We can always go from level two to level one. And that's what we're here for on, the, on this planet is to bring level one to level two, to show others that they too can choose the light instead of the darkness, that they too can choose forgiveness over judgment or a love over hate. And free will only means that you can take as long as you want to get there. Um, yeah, and there's no need to punish yourself for the length of, of time you spend in level two in the duality because uh, having co-created your journey with God, your journey is sacred. And so whatever time it takes, that's the time it takes. Don't punish yourself for being too slow to, yeah. to peace, you know. Uh -huh. It's okay. Whatever time you took, that's what you needed. And that was perfect for you. And equally so, you have to give that same uh, same respect to your brothers or sisters. They have to process their own delusions at their own sacred time and place, pace. Mm -hmm. and so as you respect yourself and, and remind, remind yourself that you co-created your journey with God and thus, and thus is perfect, and that each moment of it is perfect, so too you have to see that in your brothers. 
or else you'll never believe it in yourself about yourself. Mm -hmm. So uh, another question, I don't know if this is the person here or not. Uh, so we're talking about free will. So we are co-creating every day our, let's say, our future self, like you mentioned. But is there something uh, about destiny? For example, oh, I already came to this life to have certain to meet some some people to have uh, uh, like like we we choose our parents we choose you know, uh, like before we, we were born the the course does say something about like destiny that you have to go through regardless of how you choose in the present moment yeah not not really it doesn't get into those esoteric questions um but what you have to remember is no matter what your destiny is, your life you co-created with God. And God is perfection and God is love. And so whatever your destiny is, is going to be perfect for you. And whatever your brothers or sisters' destiny is, it's going to be perfect for them. And so that's all you have to recall. All you have to recall is that you and your brothers and sisters and everybody else has co-created the journeys with God. And thus, it's, it's perfect. And yes, some of them will turn away from, let's call it oneness, from love. But uh, they, they just do that to as part of their, sometimes as part of their mission, to to uh, experience the darkness and overcome the, the darkness so that they can have certain tools in their tool belt to help others heal and awaken. And so when you go, th when you become an addict and you decide to go through that addiction process, you overcome that, then you become uh, a coach, let's call it, for other addicts. And then but these addicts will listen to you because you, you, in their story, in your story, they're going to hear their own story. So that's why they're going to pay attention to you. These, these people, these addicts in the darkness, they're not going to pay attention to somebody who says, to somebody who says you know, why drink? <laughs> Don't drink. It's not easy. They're not going to listen to that. They're going to listen to somebody who went through the whole thing and came out of it. And so that's when they, when these people here realize that their, their challenges helped them become this person, a, a beacon of light for these people here who are going through their challenges. When, when this person helps these people, then they, this person starts to realize how perfect his journey was. Because if he, if he didn't go through this, that he wouldn't have the, t the tools to become this, this beacon for others. And so you see the perfection of your, your life experience, no matter how how, uh, how the ego chooses to define it. And so your destiny is going to be perfectly fine. Don't concern yourself with your destiny. In each moment, just do the best you can, align with love, and, and be that love for others in each and every moment. Forgive yourself and others. And you, if you're having issues forgiving yourself, like Mary is, then you know what? That's part of your that's part of your challenge that you came here to overcome. And so, what Mary's going to do is she's going to figure out that you know she's worthy of, of forgiving herself. And then Mary's going to after Mary's going to have that tool to become this person. And so, people who who are dealing with uh, 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 an inability to forgive themselves. These people will begin to look for Mary because Mary went through that whole process of not being able to forgive herself. But then she overcame it and she found her self-worth. And she found out that, yes, God wants me to forgive myself so that I can become a light in this world. And then, uh, so then Mary will help these people out. And then Mary will see how beautiful her life experience was, even this part of it. Because it's this part that helped her become this light. And so if this part, which the ego calls bad or challenging or dark or whatever, is actually a beautiful part of becoming this, then each part of your journey is, is perfect and sacred and good. Hello, Jill. If you have any questions or comments, just try to include everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody in the iPhone, too. I don't know who the iPhone person is. Really? After every week I come to your meeting, you don't know who I am? Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, figured, I figured it was Wendy. <laughs> hey, Wendy. Okay. Yeah, so we were talking about uh, forgiving, being able to forgive yourself. Yeah, I think James was thrown because I didn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you have any questions or comments in regards to uh, what we're talking about? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Yes, talking to you, Wendy. Yeah, I'm feeling stuck. Okay, that's okay. I know. Apparently, it's beautiful from what you said. Doesn't feel beautiful. Doesn't feel as beautiful as you've described it. <laughs> well, just remember we what we talked about with uh, I don't I don't know if you were he was Mari. She was having yeah. issues, she was having issues forgiving herself. So whatever issues you're having, it's the same basic uh, idea. Is I don't that, I don't know if it's forgiveness. Maybe you can help apply this to just a normal relationship situation. Okay. So uh my daughter and I had very light words this morning. It really wasn't a fight or anything, but you know, I don't like the way she talks to me, as everybody knows. And um she left and I, you know, struggled with myself and my ego and uh finally just messaged her and said, I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't like the way you act, but I am going to do my best to be nice to you under all circumstances. And so I offered to, she would have to come home to take care of her dog. And I just said, I'm going to feed the dogs for you so you can stay out with your significant other. And she was, you know, wrote me back, obviously very happy about that. Thank you. You know, I'm, she doesn't want a problem with me or anything. However, um, I'm getting ready to go to Europe and um, she is, sorry, you hear my dog whining while I talk to you because she's not getting enough attention. <laughs> Hi, you're a living representative of both me and my daughter, always complaining. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the issue is simply this. Uh, I wanted her home the night before I'm going to leave for Europe. She's supposed to take care of the animals. She has a history of being irresponsible. It's going to cause me a lot of anxiety unless I know she's here and I can leave. You know what I mean? Knowing that she's here. You know, sorry. Hey, 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 Carla. She has anyway decided to go for the weekend with her significant other and the family um, to the beach. And so she just tells me today that she's not coming home until Sunday morning. I'm leaving. I mean, Monday morning and I'm leaving Monday. And I am having, I'm just overwhelmed with anxiety. I don't want her to come home in the morning. I want her to be home the night before. I don't want any last minute. Uh, we're stuck at the beach. I can't get there, blah, blah, blah. I want her in the house before I leave so that I know there's somebody here with the animals. And um, so, you know, I thought about this for hours. I didn't want to be, you know, whatever. You, you better come here. You have to be here. You know, I'm letting you live here after everything. You've done. I didn't want to do all of that. I just finally just texted her and said, you know, I'm not comfortable with this. This isn't the agreement that we made. Um, I want to know that you're going to be here Sunday night. And if you can't get here on your own, I can come by there. My family is coming in, her family too, but she's not going. And we're going to be in Boca. And I said, I can swing by on the way back in the evening and get you. Nothing. Dead silence. So I'm, um, you know, I'm just sitting here like, okay, so it's either going to be that if we're going to get into an, a fight about this or an argument about this, which I don't want, or she's just not going to do what I say. And, and then I'm going to be, you know, very unhappy. And um, so that's where we are. It's not a fight. It's a, you know, it's, she doesn't want to do what I want her to do. She's not doing it against me. She just doesn't want to be told what to do. And she wants to do things her way. And that's where we are. So you can help me with that. I'm, I'm pretty upset because I feel I haven't had this low level of anxiety in a very long time. And I hate it. Yeah. So, so if you hate what you're feeling, it would be useful not to support the thoughts that are supporting how you feel the way of thinking that's supporting how you feel right okay and so you, and somewhere in your mind 
you're thinking that things are not, not going to go well, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So you have a decision decision to make. You can either from now until up till uh, when you need her to be here, uh, you can either be anxious and worried and stressed out and whatever, or you can just practice trusting God and being in prayer and asking God to please help guide her to make the right decision. And so it, to be fair, I spent uh, probably an hour reading out of the Course in Miracles book, the list of all the miracles in the front. And I went for a walk for a half hour. I meditated. I prayed for the Holy Spirit to show up and you hear what I sound like. So just to be fair, I have made attempts to 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 do what I'm supposed to do. But I am still, you know, I, I feel I would say if I was 100 percent anxious, maybe I'm 90 percent now. Okay, So you just continue to do what you just what you did. Continue to have thoughts that will support your peace of mind. And stop supporting thoughts that are not going to support your peace of mind. No matter what the ego says for you to, to, do, to do and think right now, you know, whatever it is that the ego tells you to think and do, it's not going to bring you peace. And so don't do that. <laughs> I know it seems simple, but practice making the conscious decision and remind yourself, I have free will. I can choose peace instead of this. I can choose to trust God instead of my fears and my anxiousness and my worry. Because in the in the in this in these moments, you can choose to trust God and, and find peace, or you can choose to be anxious. It's your choice. But you have to remind yourself that you're worthy of peace. And that God wants you to be at peace. And so use the moments that you have to support anything that will support your peace of mind and keep inviting God in and keep asking him to uh, lead your thoughts and lead the way and just make the conscious decision not to support those thoughts that are not going to support you. Stop supporting any thought that is not supporting your peace of mind. Well, I think my question is when I directed myself in the way that I know is correct, why I am, why the anxiety does what it does. It feels like it's disconnected from my attempts. Yeah, because and, the, the, ego yeah. Will not, the ego will not go quietly into the dark night. <laughs> <laughs> and so you've been, you've been programmed to think a certain way for the last, since I know you're 23, it's for the last 20 years, right? Uh, bless your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Seven fifty-seven. I think we're pretty close in age, James. Go ahead. <laughs> and so, Can I ask something, James. Yes, please. Um, Wendy, are you are you uh, concerned about the dogs? Or are you more concerned that your daughter is not doing what you want? No, I'm concerned about the I'm concerned about the animals. <laughs> well, I, well that Oh, she's she's going to be perfectly safe. She's with her boyfriend and his family at the beach, but she has a history of, you know, just sort of reliability is she's good, but there have been instances and I do worry about the animals. I really do. Uh, yeah, clearly not enough that I'm not going to trust her to take care of them while I'm gone. But the idea of her not being here the night before so that I know I can get up, get ready, and leave, and she's already here is freaking me out. Mm -hmm. well, I, I was just thinking, you know, just to put yourself at ease, you could maybe have a friend or somebody to check in on the dogs during that one day. Just, you know, just to put yourself in peace, but that's up to you. Or that there Somebody, that's a great idea. Unless you feel like driving down to my house. I don't have anybody. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't. Well, I mean, that, that's a possibility if you really needed it. Oh, you're so lovely. Uh, if she didn't show up by, you know, the time it was time for me to leave, I would cancel my trip. I mean, there's just nothing else I could do. Even if she came, you know, I just wouldn't be okay with leaving without her physical presence in that in the house. So... I think that's my plan B, really. If that were to happen, I just wouldn't leave. 
and you don't have anybody else who can take care of the animals? No, I unfortunately, I actually don't. None of my friends are animal people, and they wouldn't even know what to do. In fact, I have to put the animals away when they come over. Okay, well. My sister lives in Boca, so she won't be coming down. <laughs> well, thank no. you. I want to thank you. You know, I'm sure it will be fine. It's just not what my brain is telling me. Right. So uh, whatever it is that your brain is telling you that's not supporting your peace, then stop supporting those thoughts. And just do your best to over override your programming. Override mm -hmm. your anxious programming. And, okay. uh, yeah, it, it took 50 years to get to this place. So, uh, you know, it does, it's not going to be in the next, well, it's probably not going to be in the next uh, five minutes or so. But uh, the, oh. yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I have an idea. Um, You're visual, Wendy. So just visualize a different outcome. Visualize the outcome that she'll get there Sunday. I mean, and believe it, because when one visualizes, it's kind of like fake it until you make it, even though you're not believing this right now. You kind of see her getting there at a reasonable hour on Sunday, having a, um, you know, a quiet conversation with you. It's calm. Having the conversations that lead up to Sunday Yes, mom, I'll be there. Don't worry. See all that instead of going into a panic because, see, what we do is we conjure up these stories and the stories aren't real. So that's that's something that came to me. Just look at it and see her coming home. See it all working out. No, you're not canceling your trip. And yes, you're going. And you see yourself getting on the plane and you're at peace. Okay, I'm going to do that. It's Monday morning. What she did is she changed it from she'd come home Sunday night to she won't come home till Monday and I'm leaving on Monday. So right. I'm going to visualize her coming in, but I think I just thought of something. I don't even know if it's possible, but in my mind, I know uh, that place that I have taken my dogs before for different surgeries or whatever, they kennel. And if worse came to worse, I could probably call them. And if she didn't come home, just bring them over there, have them in the kennel, leave knowing they're taken care of. And when she shows up, she could go get them or have her boyfriend take her to go get them. And that would be a backup plan. That would be a backup plan. So I wanted to, wanted to say one other thing too. I, years ago, Marianne Williamson had a tape. Uh, you know, she's a teacher of the course and uh, she had an issue with somebody. And I don't remember the whole story, but the whole time, she was, she needed to talk to this person. She said, uh, I forgive you and I release you to the Holy Spirit. She said she must have said it a thousand times. And then when she finally ended up speaking to this person, you know, it went, it went really smoothly. Uh, so that's another option, you know, because that'll take away some of the anxiety while you're working on this. Mm -hmm. I forgive you, I release you to the Holy Spirit. Thank you guys so much. Actually, a lot of my anxiety is draining while we're having this conversation. I wasn't going to say anything because I always say something and end up monopolizing somewhat. But um, I'm really happy that I said something. We you love you. A lot. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank God James identified you as iPhone because we didn't know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. or Mrs. Mr. iPhone. Mystery woman. Oh. I just forget to change my name when I come no, on, but he always knows it's me. He always knows it's me. iPad too, so I should talk, right? <laughs> I feel a lot better. Thank you guys so, so much. Like I was really feeling very dark and I was like, go to a meeting. I'm like an alcoholic. I'm like, go to a meeting. Just listen, you. just listen. You'll be better. <laughs> We're in love. You we love you, girl. We got you back. Yeah. <laughs> we have your phone number too. <laughs> well the also, puppies all said in their love whoever was saying pile yourself up with dogs and whatever i'm like i am sitting here piled up with dogs as i always am at these meetings and it is very comforting i will say that also texting is such a way to have miscommunications too so sometimes it's better to if you can leave a real message or maybe your daughter's trying to assert her boundaries and she's really you know like maybe communicating in a loving way to be like come come to get to know where she's coming from maybe and then you can say look 
this is where you're feeling you, you can what guarantee can she give you that she will be there in the morning because you know maybe that's a really fun vacation and she doesn't want to miss a day of it and maybe there's a way to to work it out that you could feel comfortable that she'll be there monday and she could also feel comfortable that she could get her vacation in so you know maybe there's a way to talk it through to to get your to the comfort that you need it's possible i'll talk to her you know tomorrow she's leaving uh right after that but i'll she's she's gonna you know she's working tomorrow and then she's leaving on wednesday and that that's it so i won't see her again and uh until the day i leave for europe but um we'll see we'll see what happens i i did come up with a good practice when i took my walk because i was you know the first thing i thought is i forgive her she's not trying to harm me she just wants to do what she wants to do but then i thought think because my brain was like telling me she's not reliable look at how she causes you anxiety she has no respect she's changing the agreement blah 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 so I made myself instead say, think of 10 things, positive things, stop focusing on all the wrong, think of 10 things positive. And so I just, I got through five pretty quickly. Then I had to work really hard for the other five, but um, I did get all the way through the 10 because, you know, focusing on the negative and judgments is not going to help anything. You know, at the end of the day, I think I did all the right things. I just wish I felt better you know what I mean personally internally I, I wish I felt better I feel like I did all the things I was supposed to do I just don't feel great so that's it yeah and if you would have not done what you did then you wouldn't feel as good as you do now even though you think you don't feel that good <laughs> oh if I hadn't done those things it would have been me attacking her via text if you want to live in this house you're going to do what I tell you to do and I'm tired of having these issues with you I have to be able to rely on you it would have been one of those yeah. So keep uh keep doing what Bill and Liz said. Just keep uh you know reinforcing positive thoughts and uh instead of those negative thoughts and give a, give over your anxiety to the Holy Spirit. Give over your anxiety to God. Like you close your eyes, you just visualize all your anxiety. You can put your hands up in front of you. You just visualize all your anxiety in your hands and just Feel it lifting towards source and then feel uh, those places where that anxiety left you. Uh, fill it with God's love and light and know that all was going to be okay. No matter what happens, all is going to be okay. And you're going to have your plan B in place just in case, you know, about the dog sitter thingy, the dog place. And uh, that will give you the, the peace of mind that, hey, if she doesn't make it, then the dog uh, kennel uh, will be set and, you know, talk to the the dog kennel as soon as you can so you can set it up and tell them hey listen if this happens then i'm going to bring my dogs there so that you can have peace so no matter what happens you have that plan b available and then that will give you a certain level of peace thank you i do feel a lot better what was that thing liz and bill said that marianne williamson repeated a lot of times to herself before she had the actual conversation she just thought i forgive you she said, I forgive, I forgive you and I release you to the Holy Spirit. Okay. I forgive you and you can just repeat it over and over again. I forgive you and I release you to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm going to because ego is telling me we're going to have a fight and I don't want to have a fight. No, I, yeah. Conflict, I don't want to have in anything. I want to have a peaceful time before she leaves and I want to have a peaceful time before I leave. And you know, Wendy, also I was thinking that this could be a shadow from the past. And that your daughter is actually, you know, volunteering, like James always points out, uh, you know, that she's bringing this up because this is a deeper issue that you need to look at for yourself. So, you know, it, it, my lack of trust and inability to relinquish control. Well, <laughs> hey, you said it. <laughs> oh, I'm not the only, I'm not the only one who said it. I went, oh. to, a, I went to a therapist about a, a relationship with a man had nothing to do with any of that. And he said to me after our session, when we're done talking about this guy, we're going to start to deal with your control issues. And I was like, what the hell? I didn't even... <laughs> oh my God. All of us have that, I think, to yeah. some, some degree or the other. Sure, we all do. You're not, you know, the only one. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, my friends. Yeah. When, you, when you start to feel that control issue popping up, just use those moments to practice... Trusting God more. 
and putting putting the situation in God's hands instead of uh, instead of your ego's hands. And so whenever the ego pops in, just to say no, I'm gonna place this now in God's hands, not the ego's hands. And I have free will, I can decide whose hands I place it on. And I know that every time I place it in the ego's hands, nothing good comes to me. No kidding. Why do I keep doing it? Nothing good comes to me. That ego is not trustworthy at all. And yet that is where I turn every time. Yeah, this is part of your past programming that little by little you let go by by uh, having experiences where you trust God and, and things work out. And so uh, use these moments uh, as, an as an invitation from, from the universe uh, inviting you to trust God. And the more you trust God, the more you experience uh, his peace, the more you realize that, you know what? I kind of like that. I kind of like this peace instead of this pain. And little by little, you'll choose more and more peace. And then one day, one magical day, <laughs> you will choose only peace. God willing. Yes. All righty, folks. Well, it's 8.02, so I'm going to let you guys go. But thank you very much for coming. Thank you. It's a lovely thank you, talk. Jane. A lovely thank talk, like always. Thank you. Good, great topic. I thank appreciate you. all of you. Thank you, and I'll see you Thank all. you, guys. Have a great night. Be I'll well and stay safe. I'll see some of you tomorrow night, and I'll see some of you Wednesday night, and some of you Sunday night. There you go. <laughs> oh, well, wonderful. Sunday night or Sunday day? Sunday day. Thank you. Okay. I was going to say, where are we going Sunday night? <laughs> Party. We're just going to all move in together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. No, I'm going to take off those. Oh, stop recording.